everyone, and welcome to Inside ADVI. My name is Rebecca Matter, and I am joined by my learning chief, Pam Foster. How are you doing, Pam? Great. How are you? Yay. I'm excited. This is one of my favorite topics in the whole wide world. <laughs> Me too. So we're going to talk about retainer deals, and the reason it excites us so much is that one of the biggest fears when it comes to starting a writing business, especially if you're looking to transition from a job into the writing business, is the whole thing of predictable income. You have bills to pay and you can't live with income like this. That makes it very unsettling and very unstable. What I also love about retainer, so this the retainer stops that, right? It gives you that predictable income month after month. What I also love about it is it gives you a little bit of a, when it's okay to jump to full-time freelancing sign. So if you know that you need to make X amount of money to cover your bills, you could be moonlighting. And the minute you hit that number, you're like, oh, I now have permission to go full-time into freelance because I hit the marker of what I need to meet. Plus, by the way, you get the 40 hours back to then work on your writing business. So actually your income can go even higher. We're going to get into all that fun stuff. But I think that's why I love this topic. Pam, what about you? Yeah, I mean, over the years, I've been a freelance writer for, gosh, I don't know, oh, I don't even want to say, but <laughs> the retainer <laughs> deal is my favorite because it, yeah, well, we're going to define what it is, first of all, so you know what we're talking about, but I found that it gives you a lovely cushion where you know you're going to have some certain projects you enjoy doing every month, the client is excited about that, and you know what kind of income you're going to have every month, and you can build from there. So I, it's one of the best things I've found in the freelance world to remove some of that stress. And wait till you see how much you can actually make on retainer as well. So our goals for today, for this session, we got a lot to tackle. We're going to cover the benefits because predictable income is only one. There are other benefits that come with doing retainers, both for you and for your clients. We'll talk about four great retainer projects for writers to start with. And we'll also give you some tips on how to land them as well as what you can expect from the fees. We'll go over best practices for structuring retainers. There's some just some things that will help you ensure that they go smoothly and then we will also in this in this day cover just some how to approach, how do you have these conversations with potential clients? And when do you not want to have these conversations with clients as well? But first, to make sure we're all on the same page and that we are leveling this playing field, what is a retainer? So basically a retainer is an agreement between you and your client. You are providing the same writing projects on a regular basis for an agreed upon amount month after month. So that might look something like, I'm going to write you five, four blog posts a month, veterinarian Bob, and you are going to pay me $5 a post. So every month I give you four blogs, you pay me $2,000, and this is easy. You never have to ask me to write for you. I'm automatically going to do it. I never have to ask you for work because you already are, we're in this agreement together. So that's what a retainer is, just exchanging set job function. We call it scope of project, very specific. This is what I expect from you, writer. And in exchange, the writer is, this is what I expect from you, client. So it's just an exchanging of copy or content and money, and it's the same month after month. But that one is obvious. Let's actually go into other benefits. There are actually, Pam and I identified seven reasons, right? Why, why retainers rock for freelance writers. You cannot say that fast. It doesn't seem like it should be a tongue twister, <laughs> but it is. I've tried. Lots so. of cars in there, yeah. <laughs> seven reasons why retainers rock for freelance writers. Boom. Let's go through those benefits now. So there's seven that we've identified. The easiest one that we started with at the top of the hour is that it's easier to forecast your income. I know I'm getting $2,000 a month from veterinarian Bob. I'm getting $1,500 from veterinarian Sam and $1,500 from veterinarian Carla. There went a woman there too to make it nice and equal. But now I know what my income is every single month. So I don't have to worry about, you'll call it feast or famine, different, there's this rolling schedule. This month I made 10,000, this month I made 1,000. That can be a little bit stressful. So that, that prediction is nice, that being able to forecast your income. And as I also said at the beginning, it kind of gives you the marker of, if I'm doing this on the side and I'm only spending 10 hours a week, so that's why I have my extra time, and I hit this number, I know that if I add in the additional 40 hours that I'm working for my full-time job, I will be able to forecast if I could, if I know I have more clients to land and really I'm just out of time, I, then I'm safe to quit my job and actually move into, into 
freelancing. So that is an option with retainer deals, but not necessary. The second one is, and it seems like it's one and the same, but it's not. It's peace of mind. How focused do you think I can be on my writing today if I'm wondering where my rent paycheck is going to come from? How will I pay my rent this month? If that's a fear in my head, if my fear is about what well, I'm going to pay my credit card, I've got tuition to the kids' daycare, all this stuff, and I'm, I'm counting the numbers, and am I going to make enough this month? That is not a good place to be, and that doesn't feel good to me. It distracts me to no end. And really, that desperation of having to have this money just causes me to make different decisions. This one might seem woo-woo, but I will tell you as someone who <laughs> tends to worry about things, peace of mind yeah. is such a beautiful place to be in when you are trying to write, because then you can just write. You can write authentically with empathy for your readers and really be there rather than, I have to hit this because I have to make this amount of money. That's stressful. So it gives you that peace of mind to just be able to do what you love, which is writing. In addition, number three is it increases your per hour rate. Now we will tell you every single day <laughs> that you ask not to price on an hourly basis. And this is why when potential clients ask you, what is your rate for this? Or what do you charge by the hour? You say, I don't charge by the hour. I charge by the project. So if I'm saying case studies, I see it looks like my internet is unstable. I apologize. If I'm doing case studies um, and I charge $1,500 for a case study, that's what I charge for a case study. Now, when I first start writing case studies, a case study might take me 10 to 12 hours to write, but the more I write them, the faster I get. And this is why I don't write per hour because now I can write a case study in five hours. Even if I still charge $1,500 for a case study, my per hour rate has gone way up because I've gotten faster. The longer you work with clients, the longer you work on projects, the more often, the faster you will get. So you will never say, a, a, we're just not hourly people. And this is how I always pitch to clients as well. The reason I don't want to give an hour is, what if I come up with a better idea in the 11th hour? What if I dig so far into research and I find something so different that really was going to knock it out of the park. That's, I don't want to have to charge you more for all the time. You don't know. I want to be able to spend as much time as I want on the project and charge you a fair price for the project that I'm handing over. So it allows more flexibility on both sides, but efficiency is key. When it comes to writing, you will get faster. It used to take me eight hours to write an issue of our newsletter every day called the writer's life. It now takes me 30 to 45 minutes. You will get faster. So keep at it and keep your fees high and continuing to grow as well. And we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. Benefit number four, you get better results for your client and better track record for you because you get better. The longer I work for Pam, the longer I work for Veterinarian Bob, I start, I get better as a writer, but I also get the feeling of what works, right? I'm, I'm, this is a, something you might not know as a writer, you will be involved with the marketing team. R marketers want writers who care about the response. I want to hear if I'm writing emails, how many people open that email? How did that email compare to other emails? How many people clicked on that link? How many times did that blog get shared? Anything I'm doing in any area, I want to know those metrics because I can start to lean into them. Oh, wow. When I put a number in the subject line, I get better open rates. I'm going to change and do that more often. When I share this on social media, it tends to get a lot more engagement. I'm going to do more of that. The longer you work with a client on retainer, the more intel you get, the more power you have to start driving results in your favor. It's better for the client and it's better track record, meaning your success rates for you as well. So lots to be gained there. But wait, there's more. We're not done. So number five, you spend more time making money because you just get to be writing and less time marketing. Now, I don't believe in ever not marketing. I think that writers all the time should be accepting new clients. You will never say, I'm sorry, too full right now, because what if the dream client walks in and is willing to pay five times what your other clients are paying? Why would you say no to that? So having your LinkedIn profile up, having the doors open for business just gives you options, right? The writer's life is all about having freedom and freedom to be able to say, that's a better client. I'd rather work with them instead is always an opportunity. So you will always be marketing, but you're not going to have to spend a lot of time finding that next client because you already have that baseline. You already know what your income is. So you can spend that peace of mind time writing 
and be accepting of other clients that may or may not come through the door. Maybe you put out a little bit on social media. Maybe you update your samples on your website or things like that, but you're not spending time having to hit the streets, if you will, looking for more clients. In addition, because you're so awesome right now, you've become so reliable with your clients and now your track records, like now Pam is reliable. She's been writing for us for a while. Her results are just going through the roof. When my friend, neighbor, whatever says, do you ever know a writer who, yes, I do. She's amazing. Her name is Pam Foster. You will get increased referrals just because, by the way, she is amazing. You will get increased referrals simply because you're just doing a kick butt job. So uh, just another benefit. It's like, hey, here's a little bonus extra for you, writer. And then finally, increased value to your clients beyond the results of your copy If you work with clients for a while, and most of the people who've worked with me on retainer have worked with me for a very, very long time, I'm thinking of you, Heather Robson, if you're out there, Mindy McCourse, Guillermo Rubio, my best writers on retainer have worked with me, I think all of them at this point for over a decade. Do you think that they are providing mad value to me on a regular basis now because they know me, they know my style, they know anybody's voice, they know what works, what doesn't work, they know our members, they know the inner workings of all of our products and copy and content and our visions and dreams and everything that we want from this. They know all of that. So when Heather has an idea, you know, you can help AWI, she comes and offers it. When I have a question, what could I do, G, to change Guillermo, we call him G, what can I do to make this different? He's got ideas, even if it's not on the project he's working on. We are in this collective group of minds with ideas. It's amazing. And I cannot sell that one enough. How the more time you spend working with a client on retainer, and this only happens with retainer because it's all that frequency, the more value. It's like I call it an octopus effect. The more value you end up coming into all aspects of their business, things that you aren't even working on just because you are exposed in the areas that you are working on. So lots, Pam, come on. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, there are so many benefits and I actually wrote one down as an eighth one. (laughs) But um, I think it's that you become indispensable in, in a few ways. One, you've got traction with them and momentum. So if they have another project that they need, who do you think they're gonna ask to help? You, because you've kind of become their ace in the hole every month after month, reliable, good work. You're the one they're going to ask. And the second thing, too, is you suddenly become elevated to a consulting level versus just a writer, just a writer. None of us are just writers, but I think as you develop that monthly retainer uh, relationship with a client, suddenly they see you as an ally as you're coming up with other ideas for topics, or you're noticing some common questions that are being asked and you're like, let's answer those in the blog post or whatever. So it, it, you know, that indispensable part, I, I've been doing a newsletter for my accountant for 26 years now, because we're, we're, years. I know, I mean, <laughs> Some of you only you are, how long you've been writing. <laughs> I know some of them, some of you who are visiting aren't even 26 year old years old, probably. But yes, my one client that I've been working with for that long, but we can't live without each other. I need his accounting advice and he needs my writing skills because that's not what they do. So that's the beautiful thing about this. You can build some really amazing relationships that benefit both parties and having that ongoing every month output is such a gold mine for clients. They love that. They love that they can count on that. So yeah, we've got benefits galore. Because <laughs> if you leave, 26 years of experience and understanding leaves with you. Right. Onboarding a new writer is very challenging. It takes time to build that up. And I didn't even think about that. You actually gave two benefits. The ninth being, or maybe this was the eighth, and then that's the ninth. Yeah. But being able to then request other projects. I've been working with you on social media for five months. Yeah. You got, I, I've got ideas for days for your blog. I'd like to start writing the content that I want to share that I know is going to have an impact on our social media figures. Here's an addition to my, my retainer contract. Hey, you have me working on, and we're going to look at some of these examples, this project, but I also want to, I want to affect what happens after I'm handing these people off and I don't know what happens afterward. I think I could help you move the chains by ensuring a consistent conversation after somebody signs up from this thing that I'm working on with you. That's another massive benefit. You really, I hate the phrase, you can write your own ticket. 
but you kind of can, because if any of my writers comes to me and says, I also want to write this, why would I say no? <laughs> Assuming I need that thing, they're better to write it than anybody else out there. Okay. So Pam, I'm going to let you, let's talk now about, oh, actually, or is this you? This is still me. Retainers is better than your clients. <laughs> you know, I was thinking well, I we were jumping that, in. I thought we were jumping into some retainer projects. So this is, this is, we want to show the other side of it. We've talked so much about how they benefit you, but they actually benefit your clients. Clients want to work on retainer. And here's why. The first one, reduce time hiring copywriters. It takes oh. a long time to hire a good copywriter. It can't. Now, not to say if you stage them in the way that ADY recommends where you're working on a blog, something simpler first. To get people up to speed to the point where they can write on their own without massive intervention can take time. They don't have to worry about having new writers. They don't have to worry about turning the ads back on and onboarding a new one and getting them used to the way that they work and how they say things. There's shorter prep time for projects. When I asked Pam to do something four years ago, 10 years ago, longer than that when I met Pam, it might have taken a while for us to talk about the scope of the project what we're really looking for, what we know about our members, the pain points, the opportunities. She wouldn't know all that stuff. She doesn't know my writing style. She'd have to come back and make sure that I was doing, that she was doing it the way I wanted it. Now it's not even an I am. I can say, hey, Pam, can you write blah, blah, blah? And she's like, yep. She knows exactly how long it needs to be, what marks to hit, what the style and tone is. She can turn that out fast. So now I even save money in the prep time for getting a copywriter up and going. The copy is better, just like it benefits. We talked about this, you for the results and your track record. I get better copy. Having Pam write for me for 10 years, and I think we've actually known each other for even longer than 10 years now, but that makes for better copy. So I get better results. I get to spend less time and I get better copy. Uh, check, check. Yes, please. And I get better results because the copy continues to improve the results at the end of the, whatever the goal is, opens, clicks, sales, whatever it is the results get better too, just because we've had time together. It's like a good relationship. It gets seasoned over time. You get to know each other so well, we get better results just because she knows what's working and what's not. So for your clients, there's massive benefit to hiring you on retainer as well. All right, let's get into the fun piece. And that's the excellent retainer projects for freelance writers. So Pam, I'm going to let you take, we're going to cover four. Now that's what doesn't be said that you couldn't do others. And we're going to talk about that at the end, but let's cover four of the most obvious, I would say, and easy to land. Is that fair, Pam? Yep. All right. Number one, drum roll, blogging for clients. I have had so much fun blogging for clients. Um, I'll give you an example. So uh, I mainly work in the veterinary world as a freelancer um, on on the side of my full-time AWAI job. And one of my clients is a manufacturer of uh, equipment for veterinary practices. And um, they used to publish a full-color 24-page catalog that they then mailed annually super expensive. So then they hired me and I started on retainer blogging two posts every month on different products that they have, but putting a spin on it as a benefit how-to kind of blog post. And oh, by the way, if you use our equipment, that's how it's going to work out well for you. So, but we start with a question that a, a vet practice might have, like, how can I make exam room cleaning easier? And we'll talk about that in the blog post. And then with our new patented self-cleaning exam table, cut your time in half or something like that. But the sell part doesn't get done till the end. But what happened was over like two and a half years of steady blogging, they were getting so many leads from every post. The phone's calls would start coming in that they got rid of that full color, expensive photography, mail printing catalog, and just got rid of it. They're like, we don't need it anymore because the blogging is bringing in leads and traffic and sales. So that can be so much fun. And, and they really are looking for you, the idea person to help them come up with great stuff that their audience would want to read. So that is a wonderful gig because it is steady. You can't just post one blog and go, okay, we're done. And we're done. Day. Ooh, having a major thunderstorm here. Woo. <laughs> um, uh, but really it's an ongoing thing. You know, some companies blog every day 
or, you know, twice a week, or, you know, we have a weekly. Um, it, it depends on what they're selling and they may have different divisions with different blogs too. If you work with a mid-sized company, they might have a blog for this kind of customer and that kind of customer. The sky is the limit and it's steady work. They need constant feeding of the machine. So um, the purpose is of the oh, blog. Sorry. That's okay. The purpose of any blog that you're writing on behalf of a client is to attract potential customers or prospects. It's not like a daily journal just for fun. This we're talking about business blogs here. So let's say, like I said, you know, in the veterinary world, there are people out there searching for what's the best way to keep our dog safe in our kennels or something. And we have a blog on that because we fuse the seams on our kennels so they don't get shaky over time. You wouldn't believe what I know about dog equipment. <laughs> But really, that's what's so much fun, too, is you become kind of an expert on behalf of the client, and they pay you very handsomely for that. So you're attracting potential customers, you're engaging them with stuff they absolutely value in knowing. Like the best blog posts are how to overcome something or the best ways to do something. And people are searching every day for that kind of information. So if you can help your client be the best darn post on a specific topic, you are a superhero and it makes them bring in more traffic. And then a third purpose is to nurture relationships. So once a company has an audience of uh, either customers or eager prospects, or they just love the blog, they keep going, it keeps going. And, um, you know, like we post blogs all the time and we, so does our sister website, wealthywebwriter.com and b2bwritingsuccess.com. And the reason is, our audience is hungry for constant information on what's happening now. How do I go after it? What are some tips? What can I avoid? Mistakes to avoid. And we cover all that stuff. So that's really nurturing that relationship with our audience. And then finally, I'm trying to remember what the last one. Oh, yeah, it, prepare, it sets up the sale. It tees up that lead. Um, sometimes a blog post may have links in it that go directly to product pages. Uh, I see a lot of blogs, for example, like there's a DIY wedding website. In a blog, they talk about floral arrangements. But in that post, they have links to supplies and materials and other things that are actual products to buy right there and then. So boom, a blog or something like that can prep the buyer for a sale. But it also can be um, a lead generating thing too, where the blog post call to action is sign up for our free webinar that we're having on this or watch our video. And that's just another step in the sales process. But every blog is somehow leading the, the reader toward a path of becoming a customer. That's I think that's an important, like, just let's pause for a second. Cause, because I think especially new writers to this world will typically lean one way. I, I'm not a salesperson. I don't want to write copy. I want to stay on the content side. But knowing that all forms of content are appearing somewhere along what we call the customer journey from, I just realized I have a problem. I need a solution and I'm looking for it, refining these blogs all the way to the sale, all of the writers, all of the content, all of the copy, we're all still working towards the ultimate purpose of getting a sale because that's what your client wants. That's why they're in business. The only way they stay in business is to sell their solution, their product, their service to the problem that their prospect is having. We have a whole bunch of information on the ADBI website about this. We teach this in everything that we teach. But even if you want to work on the content side of things, the early on blogging, prospect, attracting, relationship building you still want to be aware of what the product is, what the ultimate sale is. It's only going to help you write more relevant content for the prospects that they're genuinely interested in reading because they ultimately are looking for a solution in coming to your client's website. So back to you, Pam. Yeah, no problem. So um, we've done a ton of research on fees and uh, we actually have a free pricing guide. If you've never seen that, just go to our website and type into the search bar pricing guide and you'll find it. But 80 different projects that people can write for clients, 80. Woo! And I'm not kidding. And we came up with the ranges for those different projects. So blogging, the typical fees, if you're writing a 300 word to 1000 word post, the fees are typically 250 to 800 per post. 
So let's do some math. If you're doing four posts a month at a thousand uh, words a post and you get 800, that's times four a month. Help me with the math. 2,400? 2,800? 800 is 3,200. 3,200. Sorry. Did I say I'm a writer, not a math person? <laughs> I got your math. Don't worry. Thank I'll you. I'll just take the oh cut right off the top of the difference. <laughs> yeah. Now, the the longer the post, the more you can get paid. So some posts, uh, we have a, a teacher here, Russ Henneberry, who's amazing, leading edge. Okay. He, he teaches blog posts that are 3,000 words and, and longer, and you get paid 3000 to $5,000 for those because there's a lot of legwork put into those. Now, um, that's just typical. You may be able to charge more if you're interviewing people and spending more time creating the content or you're creating infographics that go along with the content. But that's just a range I'm giving you. So if you're on a retainer, take that range, maybe you're 500 a post, four posts a month, that math I can do, that's 2,000 a month. And uh, that's pretty good as a starting you know, steady income you can count on for month to month for the year. Now, the second piece of blogging for clients is to help them, and I've done this many times, um, working for a veterinary practice, for example, they're like, we don't know what to talk about. We're saving animals. You know, we have no idea. And I'll say, okay, February is dental month. So let's talk about that. You're going to offer a, a special on dental things, you know, uh, treatment. And then what's going on in the summer? Lyme and tick season, flea and tick season. So we're going to talk about prevention and that's a topic. So everything you can come up with based on your knowledge of the landscape and you'll learn uh, a lot about the landscape as you're growing your blog posts for clients, um, you can charge to set up an annual calendar or a six month calendar and see how it's going and then modify it for the rest of the year. So you just take a regular old calendar and say, okay, we're going to do four posts a month what are those four topics? I have four ideas for you. We can answer a common question. We can look at what um, hol national holidays are, like Thanksgiving, we always wanna talk about poisons and foods that, that pet owners may not know are poisonous to their, their animals. You know, just things like that. You can be looking out for topics that will be that. super relevant and then put it out in a calendar and, and maybe even help the client come up with offers tied to those themes. So, um, you know, spring cleaning, have a May open house. What kind of themes can we talk about? And then what can you offer as a special theme discount of the month or of that post? So again, you're helping them with their marketing and that has so much value. So that's why you can get paid just $800 to just map out a calendar with ideas. As you guys see these, Pam, that's so interesting, that whole seasonal idea also, because mm -hmm. what a great way of getting your foot in the door as well. Like, hey, I'm, sh you know, summer's coming up, veterinarian Bob, I'm sure your patients are, are curious about flea and tick season. Why don't we do blouse? Why don't we have, like, you could really, I love that, create even opportunities for them to have offers, to bring people in. Let's do National Teeth Cleaning Month, like, you know, dogs dental care. And that's the month. And we offer a special to bring them in to have their dog's teeth clean. And it's, I love that so much. One thing and I wanted to say, guys, think about the number that you, it's, some of you are, are, are amazed already at the fees. Think about that number. Like, what is the number that you need to make on a monthly basis? Not what you want to make, what you need to make. By writing that down right now, you, as you go through this webinar, will already see like, oh, if you need to make $3,200 a month, go land a client and write four in our blog posts. Let's go. And that's yeah. typically in the B2B space. We, we'll talk about that. We can, we can get into some of that another day, but you could start to see like, huh, I don't really need that much comparable to what I need to take on in order to get that. So it might be worthwhile if you pause for a second, I'm talking to the attendees, just think yeah. about that number. Like, what is it that you actually need to make? And maybe by the end of this, you'll already have an idea of what projects you'll want to offer. All right, Pam, your other favorite love. Yes, I've been doing these projects, print and online versions since 1990. I don't even want to say a long time. A long time. <laughs> actually, even before that, because I had full-time jobs back in the day where I also was responsible for newsletters. So 
I don't know, since 1962. I'm, I'm kidding, but I've been doing newsletters for a really long time. And they came like chiseled on stones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rock, whatever. Um, written on walls. Uh, <laughs> Stone Age. <laughs> no wonder my hair is gray. Um, the thing about newsletters is you might be surprised at how popular they still are. More popular. I mean, they're growing in popularity. Yeah, it, they're, they're, it's like one of the top projects that people actually look forward to in their email box, that they look forward to reading if it's a company they like, and, um, and if, if it's really helpful to them. So the idea behind newsletters is, again, ongoing. You're not just going to write one newsletter and say, have a nice day. You're going to be writing them month after month after month or week after week after week, depending on who you're writing for. Oh my gosh, like Morning Brew and, the, and some others are every single day. And they have five different issues every single day. They have a business one and a finance one and a health one and every single day, newsletters. So the typical idea is that the newsletter is setting up the company as an authority or an expert on a topic. So that little new the, uh, image up there is Honeck O'Toole Accountants, and that's who I've been writing newsletters for for 26, 27 years now. And they still mail it out in the old-fashioned U.S. mail, but they also post the issue on uh, online as a PDF. But every issue is meant to provide tips to the right readers, which are um, their small business clients and individuals who they do tax returns for, and offer tips on saving money, saving on taxes, what to do with changes because of COVID, and what to do with those um, stimulus payments, and what to do if you're renting a house, all these tips. So I get to write those articles as a lay person because I'm not an accountant and I don't understand what they're talking about. So I have to go find out how to explain these things in plain English to everybody else who's doing their thing and not studying accounting. <laughs> so they'll be like, you have to talk about the new IRS code X 64 D. I'm like, huh? And so I go look it up. I find out what it means. And then I put it into English in the newsletter, but it makes them look really good. <laughs> and that's okay with me because they pay me well. <laughs> um, and so even if you're sending a newsletter to customers uh, that are already buying something, they're already paying customers, a couple of things can also happen. Prospects can come across them online like this one. Um, they can just up, open one of the PDFs and go, wow, this accounting firm is amazing. But also those customers that are happy may refer to other people. Like you should go to my accountant because every quarter they send out this mind-blowingly simple, broken down into plain English newsletter. And I love them for that. So you have a lot of opportunities as a newsletter writer to help, for, uh, help uh, what's the word, support leads and sales again. Then you turn customers into repeat buyers with newsletters because quite often each issue will have either an offer, an upsell, um, for example, even in an accounting newsletter, we'll talk about um, college planning and some new things that are happening with financial aid and everything. And then they'll say, if you want help with your personal situation with your student that's looking at colleges, call us and we'll sit down and help you. Well, they're going to charge you for that. So that's extra money for them. But it could also be like uh, a gardening center newsletter where they say, you know, this week we have all of our organic um, annuals on 25% off. Come in and get them while they're hot. Get them while we have them. So it, it can re repeat that buying cycle because they've, they've already signed up. They already like what you have to say. And then you can offer them things that they will enjoy and they go ahead and buy from you. And then of, of course, valued relationships, uh, it goes hand, just like the blog, except this even is more personal because it comes into your email box and you you might even be looking forward to it. I mean, our newsletters are set up that way, um, where we're talking directly to the person who cares about making a living as a writer. So they want the tips that we send them. And that relationship with us, we take very seriously, and we want to make sure you're getting everything you need to succeed. So that's our mission with our newsletter, and that's a relationship between you and us. So typical fees. All right, now this is what 
I've seen out there. And some of you go, guys might go, wait a minute, I charge a lot more than that. Or, oh, I'm only getting way less. Typically, <laughs> um, for a 1,200 to 1,500 word newsletter, which is what I write for my accountant. Actually, I think it's a total of almost 2,000 words, but the topics are repeated and often so easy, it might take me a day to write them. 800 to 2,000 per issue. I'd like to make 800 in just a day, maybe not a full day, maybe a four-hour day writing some copy. That's pretty good, right? It's not, not bad. No. <laughs> I don't hate it. <laughs> I don't hate it either. <laughs> it's like 200 bucks an hour if you think about it. So and then you're seeing that little cal calendar image there because you're going to do this again and again and again. So that's what the retainer beauty is for newsletters is that they're repeated on a regular schedule. Come hell or high water, they have to be published because everyone's counting on them. And that's a predictable marketing method for the company. So um, that's where you can step in and just set up a retainer and be their go-to writer every issue. So Love that's why it. newsletters are cool. All right, All right, I'm going to fly to the next two because there's a lot of overlap as far as themes go, but yeah. I just want to make sure that we have a couple of other ideas. So the number three one is social media. Social media is one of the easiest retainers, and it's actually one of the ones that you can't do without a retainer because it really is learning what is working on social media, how they're using it, and really becoming one of their people in there. I insider tip on how to get social media clients participate in their social media channels. Every single person who works for us on social media was active in our social media, right? When Robert Rice reached out, when people say like, I need it, Steve Maurer, we're looking for a LinkedIn person. Who did we go to? Steve Maurer, because he was so helpful on LinkedIn. He was already there anyways, doing the thing. So whether you're waiting for them to contact you or you just do it for a few weeks with great answers, so much positivity, enthusiasm for the company, so that when you reach out, they're like, ah, that's that Pam Foster. I know exactly who she is. She's so great on social media. It's like a free audition, if you will, before you even follow up. But so social media, there's multiple ways that people use it. One of the most obvious that we think of is brand awareness. So this is what I do. Here's what I am. I can give tips, let's say, on writing. I can give veterinary things. I can just even connect all the blog topics at Pam's editorial calendar for blogging on social media to have that seasonal flow of content that shows I'm giving people what I am selling, basically. Look, this is this is my brand. You're already engaging with me. You're knowing, liking, and trusting me. So when you're ready to make a purchase or buy the solution, I'm there. It's also used for lead generation. So you might be interested in something like this. So I'm putting out tips to try and find people. I'm looking for people to join my clean food eating challenge. So I'm going to put out clean recipes. Uh, recipes of for people who are interested in cooking clean so I can attract people through social media to ultimately get them into my paid clean eating challenge. And then customer service. The third one, the third way, and you should be asking clients how they're using social media is to service their current clients. So it could be brand awareness. It could be lead generation, meaning I'm attracting you, trying to move you into potentially into one of our selling environments, or I'm just servicing my customers. You see this a lot with social media groups. Um, where we're coming back to you. using my clean food example. There's a group that I follow on social media called clean food crush. Her web, her Facebook is all about answering questions about those recipes, answering questions that people have about sleep and what to eat and stress and hormones and all those things. Cause it's constantly pushing them into her paid service. And then she's servicing customers who are in it, who have questions. Those customers then turn around and say how great everything is going. I love this company so much which is then selling other people who are in the group and participating in social media. There's so much that can be done in social media. We can't even scratch the surface because there are so many platforms. What I will say though is social media, there's the content posting, there's the relationship building, there's the conversations that are happening. And just like everything else that we talked about at the beginning with the retainers, there's the idea spinning. Every conversation you have, every question that gets asked, those are all ideas for blogs, for newsletters. It's so easy. I love social media because you can turn around to your client and say, I have so many ideas just from talking to your potential clients. I know exactly what they want. Here's what we're going to cover in the blog. Here's what we're going to cover in the newsletter and so on. Social media, 
if you're doing the management side of it, you're looking at a thousand to two thousand dollars per month per platform. So that's something that's very easy for you to add on. It will vary depending on what kind of frequency you and your clients decide. So am I posting three times a day? Am I posting once a day? Am I maintaining the conversations? It, it can vary, but just understanding what that is. But two thousand dollars a month to spend a couple of hours on a platform that you already probably are on anyways. Is really not that bad. Or you can run what are called social media ad campaigns where you're writing those ads and that's more of like a $500 per month where you're just monitoring the ads to make sure that questions are getting answered, comments are staying positive, marketing is able to adjust copy based on what you're seeing in the comments. So that's just another way. We have a whole program on social media. We have programs on all of this, by the way. If there is a way to make a living as a writer, ABI has a program that teaches you how. We have a social media program that teaches you many different platforms and all the different ways that you can be effective in social media. But great retainer because it requires ongoing maintenance. And then the fourth one, and the reason I'm rushing a little bit is I want to get to the end, which is the restructuring piece of it. One of my favorite is email. And here's why email has high frequency, just like blogs. It's like, you know, three times a week, one time a week, newsletters might be weekly, might be monthly. Emails can grow and grow and grow. And it's because more emails equals more sales. Most writers don't realize this, but they put a lot of uh, attention on the sales letter writer, on the lead generation specialist, on the person who does all the selling, on the sales team. Do you know what happens if there are no emails? The sales team has no leads. The sales letters get no eyeballs and nobody goes through the lead generation funnels because nothing is driving them there. The emails are the rainmakers. The emails are the things that bring people, that bring eyeballs, that bring traffic. Email is one of the best retainers because of the frequency you can add. You can go to your client anytime and say, this is a great campaign with these seven emails. But what if we added in a second layer of emails for people who click on those emails and we meet them where they are and have a secondary conversation? All of a sudden, your retainer rate just went from, let's say, 2000 to 4000 or whatever the thing is. It continues to move up. Hey, client, you've got this lead generation thing. And, and we cover this in great detail on the website. I'm just giving you the top level. You've got this great series of 10 emails. What if though, but you're covering four different ideas in there? What if when someone clicks on one of the emails within and tells you what they're interested in, I write a whole other funnel specifically for that using the veterinary example. What if we ask them their biggest fear right now? Let's go infant safety. What if we ask moms their biggest fear right now and we give them a choice of six? And depending on which one they choose, we have a whole email sequence that's completely specific to what their fear is and the product that you sell that is the solution to that fear or problem. Now you've turned one series of email into six series of emails. There is no limit to emails. And again, more emails equals more sales. It goes directly to the bottom line because it drives the eyes to the sales letter. It drives people to the sales reps. They need this. So it's one of my favorite because of that volume. All of the benefits we talked about early on about learning the company, the style, what works, what doesn't, adjusting. It happens so much. It's intensified. It's accelerated with email, not only because of the volume, but because of the data that you get. You get open rates from the subject lines. You get clicks from the links. You get order volume, all that stuff. It just helps you become a very, very effective writer. Guillermo Rubio um, G, he actually is one of, he's my, probably my favorite email writer of all time and, and definitely one of the best I have on retainer. Sorry, other email writers. <laughs> He's, the best. he's my favorite, <laughs> but he's also our faculty member on email writing. He set out to be a sales letter writer. He was like, yes, sales letters are where it's at. I want to be a six-figure copywriter. He was a barista and ballroom dance instructor when I first met him. He got the sales letter course that ADBI taught, marched into our office and said, I want to be a sales letter writer and I want to work for ADBI. He went on to work with some of the best writers in the business and make a ton of money writing sales letters only to find out, and he says he doesn't regret that because he did make a lot of money and he learned a lot, only to find out that email, he can make just as much money 
write an email and he loves it and pretty much makes most spends most of his time and focus most of his efforts on email writing today because just it's so like Pam said, spending four hours working on a newsletter, you could write an email in 30 minutes and a paycheck. It's like 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, paycheck, paycheck, paycheck. So emails are used in all aspects. You can increase and increase and just keep growing those retainers. They're used to convert prospects to customers. So prospect is someone who has not bought yet. Emails are used to push them or move them over by driving them to the sales letter or to the sales team. They're used after purchase to ensure that customers are satisfied with the purchase. So even if you're like resisting at first saying, I don't really want to be part of the, do it after, right? This is a huge opportunity for any writer, by the way, retention. Retention is after the purchase. How many people refund and decide that they, they, are, they don't want that product or service anymore? That's a huge money. The company is bleeding money. You could be saving it. You could just make people happy with their purchase. That is a huge opportunity in email. So it's another way that where there's massive volume for email writers. And then they finally, they move customers to the next purchase. So you just purchased the infant safety bathtub, you'll probably also want the next thing after bath comes sleep. Maybe you want the swaddling thing that keeps the baby feeling safe. Maybe you'll be interested in this monitor that tells you if the baby stops breathing in the middle of the night. Number one fear for all new moms, by the way, that the baby will stop breathing in the middle of the night. That's what those emails can do, moving them from purchase to next purchase. So it's big opportunity. You can grow it as much as you want. And you'll learn more with writing emails, not to like knock the other ones, because they're all great retainer deals. I would do any one of them, but if you can get in on emails, it's pretty, pretty sweet. Um, ongoing campaigns, whether you're doing a funnel. So funnel just means like these 10 emails are going to go no matter what in this sequence or a retainer series, um, $3,000 to $5,000 for a set number of emails per month. So client, I will write 20 emails for you. I will charge you $5,000 no matter what it is, no matter what length, it's just kind of all the stuff. And so you can really grow that retainer rather fast for clients. Okay, sorry for getting all that fast. I'm just being mindful of the time and I want to get to your questions. So Pam, if we can, we got to kind of fly through this because we've only got 10 minutes left, but if you can cover some best practices for landing retainer deals. Yes, indeed. And um, I don't want to cut this too short. I want you to know that we have on Inside AWAI, several sessions on getting clients. Someone was just asking, how do I get clients? Start there. We've got how to get your foot in the door, what to say to your first client, how to position yourself, you know, and attract clients. We've got a lot of content there. So please, oh, please go over there and check that out because it's a, it's a big, huge treasure chest just for you. Now, um, when, when you have a client, you want to bring up retainers with any client you have because they, if, if they have newsletters, which they should, if they have email, which they must, um, if they have a blog or not, you can propose to write for them. I mean, maybe they already have a black blog, but it, the last time they did a post was four months ago because nobody has time to write it or they don't know what to write about. You're like, I can bring that back to life. I'll come up with all these topics. So every client you have um, is a potential retainer option for you. Um, you do need to understand what they're doing, though. I mean, that would be really helpful. Like I said, if you look at their blog and the last post was six months ago, there's some trouble there and you can help. <laughs> Um, if they're doing, uh, oh, well, that's okay. Backwards here. I'm, I'm clairvoyantly knowing what this, what these awesome. slides are. <laughs> um, but again, you know, if, if you have a client already and you're doing something for them, like, uh, let me think, maybe you're doing case studies for them or video scripts, or, uh, you're doing blogging for them, but not e-newsletters or email. You could say, you know, I know I'm doing some blog posts for you, but uh, what do your emails look like? Because I'd love to help you with that. Are you really happy with how much traffic and open rates you're getting from those emails? Um, same thing with newsletters. Do you happen to have a newsletter? Or I saw in your newsletter that um, it's kind of thin on content and I've got some ideas where I can add more value. So or like you're running the same emails again and again. Why don't we just do it a retainer deal and I'll write you fresh emails every single yeah. month so we're having an authentic conversation with your audience. It goes right. everywhere. 
All right. And then um, again, if you if you re remind them of the benefits of that own go ongoing work, like you could say, gosh, you know, if we're answering those questions that your customer service staff has to answer every day, you know, fresh on the phone. I bet if we did some blog posts answering those questions, that would cut your customer service phone time down on repeated stuff that they have to always say. They can just go, you know what? We have an amazing blog post with the answer to that and some tips. Go to this link and you'll get what you need. I mean, that's one benefit. There are all kinds. Yeah. So, you know, make sure they're fit first, though. It's uh, like a marriage. You don't want to get like... Ooh, you want yeah. to think about this before you offer a retainer, right? Because you don't want to be writing for someone that you don't want to be writing for. <laughs> I Well, I saw a note from EG, I think it was, who said, I started doing a retainer and they wanted to micromanage everything and it wasn't working out. So now I'm free reign. I still write for them, but we're not stuck on retainer. So, hey, that could happen. And then you move on and find a great retainer relationship. I've had great ones in my career. I've had a couple of wonky ones that don't exist anymore. And um, that's okay. You get to choose. That's one of the coolest things about being a freelance writer is you're not stuck with the J-O-B or a certain career or something that you don't like. You can change anything. You can change your clients. You can change your niche. You can change the projects that you work on. Yeah. This is really your opportunity to try on a lot of hats and find the ones that fit your head best. Yeah. And um, the, the thing that we wanted to say about retainers is that you can start with a small project, like I'm going to do one newsletter a quarter, which is what I do for my accountant. That's all they want to do. And that's okay. It's not a big monthly income for me. But from that first foray into doing some regular work for them, they then turned to me and said, hey, we're going to completely revamp our website. Can you help us with that? And that's where the big bucks came in because I helped them with keyword research and writing the, all the new copy. And that was a much more fun project. And it all started with a little quarterly newsletter that I still do for them because it's just fun. Um, so the benefits, small or big, are the same. Steady income, everything we said, you're building a relationship. And then over time, as I have with my accountant, because they increase their fees every year. I have increased my newsletter fee to them every year, just slightly. But, you know, we're keeping it on an even keel. Hey, you're going to charge me more to do my taxes. By the way, my email, my, my newsletter fee has gone up. So you have that right. And, and most yeah. of the time, if you're doing a great job, the client's like, sure, go ahead. Of course, makes sense. Um, it, like I said, it opens you up to other projects. So you start with small, but it could blossom into something amazing if, if you're happy and they're, they're liking your work. Um, evaluate your deal regularly. So I often do set up retainers for a year, but I might say after three months, if it's a new client or six months, we're going to revisit this and see how we're doing. Are you happy with how it's going? Am I happy with how it's going? If they're a big pain, I might be moving on and say, let's let's uh, uh, politely agree to sever this retainer right now because, yeah, but it can happen. So or it, you might it, change the fee. Like you said, the scope was going to be 500 words, but really what you're yeah. asking for is more like 800, which I'm happy to do, but an 800 blog post is worth this. And so the retainer needs to be adjusted to meet what you're actually asking me to do. Yes. And they may add on other projects that they want to add to your retainer agreement. So that's happened too, where if you start out blogging and suddenly they go, you know, we want you also to do our newsletter every month. Plus we want to do a video on YouTube every month. We just decided that. You're like, okay, it's new retainer agreement time. <laughs> so you adjust that. And then uh, like, again, always think of different ways you can help them with your copywriting skills in things that need help like their website, for example, or, you know, you have these newsletters and emails that are all driving traffic to a web page and the web page is eh, lame. Maybe you can help them with that too. So, all right. Propose new deals with additional value. This kind of is all layering on top of each other because you get, you start small or you start with one project, you can expand it. And then um, if you get some traction going and they might have you become as Les Worley once did their golden unicorn and um, they might have you doing everything. So it's crazy. That's really how it works, right? Like you start here and if you look at, we have this something called the copy content continuum on Andy right. website that shows all the content and copy projects. You can just kind of start and be like, okay, what comes next in the chain? 
All right, I'm going to add that to my retainer. Okay, what comes next in the chain of marketing? I'm going to add that to my retainer and just keep on. And what starts as a small retainer could end up being a really big one, just like clients will, what we call scope creep. Yeah. You can too, <laughs> but with your creep, it comes with more money automatically assumed every time you add something to your retainer. Yeah, and like we did when we opened up, there are benefits to clients, of course, of this whole situation. It's not just a benefit to you. So um, like Rebecca said, you become a consultant to them because you're really building a relationship where you understand their business, their products, their services, their customers. So that's huge because they can count on you to just jump in and do something with a deep knowledge of their business. So that's a huge benefit. Um, I'm not sure what the other... Oh, there's this uh, animation on these. <laughs> I know it's wacky. The uh, the target audience again. You'll understand their prospects and audience. As a as someone who's been writing for my accountant for twenty years, twenty seven years, I understand their reader really well. Small business people and individuals trying to deal with financial matters of all kinds. I totally get that because I am that also. But let's say you know you love gardening and you start writing for a gardening uh, newsletter. And you just keep learning more and more, not only about gardening and the whole industry, but about how this client is the best gardening center you've ever seen and why and things like that and why people flock to them. What is it they're looking for? You're really going to start to understand that. And that has huge value to the client for ongoing needs that they have. They never and clients that might not be obvious to them to say the right. longer I'm with you, the better we're going to get together. Like I'm going to be able to provide these additional benefits, which is. They might not see it. They really think just about you're doing this project and here's the fee. When you peel that back and teach, this is another inside tip. Use it every by stuff. All the stuff that we teach you, use it when talking to clients. And that goes for all of our, if you get into our programs, we have methodologies and principles and the ways that we teach things. You are more than welcome to then educate clients. It just shows that you have are well-trained and that you provide more value to them than what they realize when they're hiring you for the client. And then as we talked about, they, everything moves faster, right? And they're, you're able to up, offer up all these other ideas yeah. because. I yeah. have one more insight on this too. And then you we're at time. Have, we're running out of time. One, it'll take 30 seconds, not even. So my accountant, 27 years. I have not been writing for the same contact at the accounting firm. Pe people have gone, retired, come in, then took another job. And I have always been there. So I actually, so cool. educate, I actually educate the new person who steps in. This is what <laughs> we've been doing. This is how it works. Do you like that method? And they're like, yeah, why would I change it? So we just go on. So I'm suddenly the senior person on their marketing staff. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're going to, I think we're going to just rapid fire through this. So we're just giving clear, clients a clear out. So again, if you're, this is for more of like the structuring, just to say, let's just try this for 90 days and see what works on both sides. It might not work for you. It might not work for them. That way, both of you kind of have a try it out for a while without commitment. You can give them a specified amount of time required for canceling the retainer. So if you cancel my retainer, you will continue to pay it for 30 days. I want a 30 day buyout notice. It's good for both of you. Not only does it make them think ahead, but it allows you to have a little bit of time. This is all about predictable income. The last thing we want is for someone to give you, to pull out income for next month that you don't have time to replace. So just remember that. And that's to be expected. They're, you're, they're dealing business. They're doing business with a professional service provider. You are a professional service provider. So these things are expected. It will just make you look even more professional and will protect you as well. So just some quick best practices, and then we'll open it up for questions for structuring retainer deals. Consider these, these are win-wins. I love the win-wins. Your time, right? Both spent and saved, lots to be gained there. Your regular rate if contracted individually. So when you write a retainer, typically you will write out, I usually charge $5 a blog post, but if you contract for a month, I'll do it for $1,600 instead of $2,000. So you can show that. So you can show the time, like you're going to save all this time because I'm handling this for you. You can say, this is my regular rate and I'm going to do this and this and this and this. But if you sign a retainer, I'll do it for this much per month. So that's just a great way of selling it. Remember that value to the client. So think about that ROI. By me doing this for you on a regular basis, your traffic will consistently rise on your website. Your social media will, like whatever the benefit is, 
make sure you sell it. You're not going to have to go find new blog writers. You can free up that marketer on your team who's struggling, obviously, to write your blogs because you haven't posted in three months. Remember that, that there's more to it than just what your retainer is being charged and the savings to the client exchange for guaranteed work every month. Like I'm giving you a savings because you're guaranteeing me this work with this 30, 30 day buyout. There's so many win-wins when it comes to, so don't be, the, all of this is really to say, don't be so rigid, like really think about and talk about the benefits for both of you. Even though you might piecemeal the articles for 500 a piece, is there benefit to you to not having to worry about finding a new article to be written? Is it worth it to you to do it for 1600 just because it's one 1600 every single month rather than trying to find four different clients for four articles? So just think about those things when figuring out what you want to charge. And my biggest insight that I got from Elise Bennett on pricing is just do a gut check. What, cause people are always afraid of like, what if I price too low and I could have made more. This is what I say to you. How much do you want to make where you would feel happy? I feel happy. If I write these four blogs every single month at $1,600, $700, whatever it is, I would feel happy. Could you have made more? Maybe, but either way you're happy. So it doesn't matter go with that number. Anything below that, don't bother. Because if a client can't afford the number that makes you happy, you're basically signing on to be unhappy, which just builds resentment over time. It's time wasted. You could, the next client you talk to might've been good to come in at that rate. It's not to say if you're, not, if you're just starting out, not to start slow and build up. But when it comes to pricing, be real with yourself. I'm not saying swing for the fences. You can do that later. But right now, like, would you be happy getting paid $800 straight a newsletter? And I'm not saying that's the right yes or no, but answer that question for yourself. This is your business. It's your time. And you they say money can't buy you happiness, but it can buy you freedom, right? And freedom can make you very happy. You are buying freedom here. So don't suck up your time doing jobs that you're not really happy about. This is your opportunity to set the life that you want through writing. So take the time, do those gut checks and be honest with yourself. What do you actually want to make? If you think about that, if you think about everything included, your benefits, their benefits, all of it, you're likely to find a win-win and then you're likely to win with a true win-win. If you genuinely go into a conversation, a negotiation, anything with trying to find where both of us get something from this exchange, that's going to be a win-win. It's going to be very easy to sell. Any kind of, anytime you want to get more than, there's automatically a little bit of tension in that conversation. But if you just go in wholeheartedly wanting to help the client and wanting them to benefit you, you'll find out what the win-win is. So we have tons of resources. I told you about our, our um, programs on our website, our blogging, newsletters, email writing, and social media marketing experts. They're all in the, we have the ADBI archives. So anything you could possibly need to know, if you go to this content page and you just type in the word, just go to our website, type in the word, let's say it's pricing, you get the pricing guide. Let's say it's subject lines, writing, you'll get tips on writing subject lines. We have so much free content on the ADBI website. And then you'll find all of these programs in our ADBI catalog at adbi.com forward slash catalog. If you just scroll down, you'll find blogging, you'll find these, these four programs. And then we also have coming up, this, this is timely wise, uh, email certification. So we have a mentorship with the guy I talked about earlier, Guillermo Rubio, his name is G, my favorite email writer, and he happens to be an excellent teacher. Not only do we hire him on retainer to write emails for us, we hire him to train the email writers who work for ADBI as well. So if you are like, I love retainers, I like this idea, and I want to go in on the project that has frequency. Again, I hate the phrase, write your own ticket, but remember with emails, more emails equals more sales, which means any email I want to write for a client benefits them and me. So you can easily drive up your retainers over time. Um, and he's going to show you how to do all that. He'll show you how to write all the kinds of emails for all the different kinds of campaigns. And there are lots of different ways to write emails and lots of different ways that clients use emails. He's going to show you that. He's going to show you how to get clients. He's going to show you how to negotiate retainers. 
and all that good stuff. So information is there, adbio.com forward slash email writing. And because money loves speed, another phrase you're going to hear us use a lot, this starts next week. So if you are thinking, yes, I like this whole retainer thing. Okay, I'm in emails. Go learn about it today. You'll learn a lot about all the ways that emails are used, which is actually beneficial anyways. But if you decide you're in, start. Just jump in next week, get started so you can start making money. This webinar, I think the certification, this mentorship is only five weeks long, which means you can be certified with an actual seal and be out working by next month. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? With your next retainer deal. Okay, we went seven minutes over. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Yeah. How can we Thank help? Thank you. And I've been typing madly over in the QA, hoping to answer a lot of questions for people. And, but one that I think, Rebecca, you'd be best to answer is this one from John. Which social media channels are proving to be the most effective? So interestingly, we just covered this in our summit. If you missed the summit, go to our website and type in summit. Uh, all of the people talked about this a lot, all of our experts, it's going to vary by company, but it really is about how much time you put into it. So I wanted to do TikTok for a while now, but I don't actually want to spend the time necessary to grow the TikTok channel. If I spend the effort on TikTok, it will probably yield a result. But because I don't have the time, the bandwidth to do that, I'm going to go with the channel's that work best for my company. So you're going to ask clients which social media channels are working best for them right now. And really from there, it can depend on their audience. For us, Facebook works really well. Most of our members are on Facebook, love it or hate it, I know. But it's a platform they're comfortable using. It allows us to do groups and, and that works for us. LinkedIn is our secondary. For other companies who are more video-based, YouTube might be the best thing or it might be TikTok having a relationship with building that audience that way. There's no right. So start with your potential clients, ask them what channels are working for them right now. And if they don't know, or they haven't been doing it, just look at their competitors. If you're writing for, let's say veterinarian Bob, and this is actually a tip for you guys on how to get in. I got this one from Andrew Davis, who's our, our certification teacher on our video side. You study all the competitors in the area. So you go look to see where they seem to be really effective on social media in the veterinary industry in your area. And then you go to veterinarian Bob and say, you know what they're doing? They're all really effective over here, but here's what they're doing wrong and why you could do it better. Here's how we can do it for you. Now you are a subject matter expert in the area of veterinary social media just by studying other people's what's working for them and ideas that you have, even with zero experience, zero track record, because you judge something as good or bad and layered on how to make it better you are now the expert in that space. It's very easy to have that conversation. That was a longer answer than what you asked for, but that's a bigger answer with a lot more packed in that will help you really in any channel you do. You can do that in video. You can do that in email. Here's what they're doing. Here's how we can do it better. So that's a good way of giving you intel on what is working for their competitors. Okay. I'm reading all these questions. Let's see. I just wanted to celebrate with David, uh, Dave Henning. He said, I just closed my large retainer deal this morning on a Zoom with a well-known national company for all their locations with a simple two-page presentation and agreement signature at the bottom. Woo! Woo! That's how it's done, folks. That's <laughs> I so love glad. that. Yeah. I want to talk really quick about um, Monia Marie. I love your name so much. And I apologize if I butchered it. She's talking about the cost of the certification. Our certifications are higher level training. Um, what I recommend, so we also have, and if those of you who are interested in email, have an email writing program in the catalog. The way our, our courses are structured are basically we price based on the exposure and what it takes to go through the program, how much hands-on it is. So if you are looking to get started in something and you're not really ready for an all-in style training, the self-study programs are where it's at because you will work at your own pace. You'll work on the content. You will have writing assignments. You'll turn them in and get reviews, but it's not at that teacher to student ratio. So for, for you, if you don't have money for a certification, and really, if you're just getting started, certification might not be where you want to start yet. Use our self-study programs. That will help you get started. And they're oftentimes on sale through the catalog. Um, and through ADBI, if you just sign up for our newsletter, you'll see discounts a lot on the self-study programs. Certifications, though, it's teacher-student. So you are working with an instructor, 
every single week, twice a week, you're getting assignments, you're getting feedback every step of the way, you're building a portfolio, you're getting guidance on that, you're asking the instructor questions. Certifications are more like classroom setting. So that's why the fee, the price is so different. So really just ask yourself, am I a self-starter? Can I get by doing this with a self-study program, knowing that all AWI programs are built on our core methodology for training. We've been in this business 25 years. We know how to train. We know how to train through a self-study for a self-motivated, self-starting person. And we know how to train in a classroom setting of how when people really want to get in here and specialize and become great, that's what our certifications are for. So it just allows a variety of learning styles and also uh, pricing. That was, that's what's more effective for you. So hopefully that helps you find the program that's best suited for you where you are right now. Okay, my goodness. We have so many questions. We're whipping through here. Oh, Cheryl, uh, went, he went into Guillermo's class. So yay. Thank you, Cheryl. She said, yeah. I don't love, he, she called him Guillo, which I love. I'm going to call him Guillo on Thursday. <laughs> All right. Pam's going uh, wonky. I can tell she needs to hone in. You want me to look at what? Your eyes are like, whoa. Sorry, <laughs> I'm just looking to what comments versus questions um, we're getting. Thank. Oh, what days of the certified email program with G? Do we know the schedule? Anybody? I schedule? don't, but it should be on that page. If it's not, if someone in the Q and A can note that and send that to Jackie, <laughs> we need to get those dates up. But I know it does start next week. Hopefully, Jake knows the dates and can post them um somewhere Anthony's asking about um uh let's see he's finished courses with us and he thought it would be a good time to start looking for writing opportunities yes um where do I begin is his question in the nutshell (laughs) so interestingly there's lots of ways that you could get clients and every program that we do closes with how do you get clients? Because we don't believe that having a skill is enough. You got to have people to pay you for the skill. This is not a hobby for you. This is a career. So every program that you all take with us, including certifications, always closes with how do you get clients now? So definitely go back to any programs because there, there's a section at the end that is specific to that program. The easiest way, though, to build your business and get started is through LinkedIn. We have a whole training session. It's Elise Benin's 21-Day Challenge. It just started live this week, so you could jump in and easily catch up. I don't know, Jake, if you're out there, if you guys could put a link in for that. That is, I've been in this business, I've been with 80 by 18 years. I've been in my career almost 25, but I have worked with every known business building, client getting, expert system method. Like I have been through the gauntlet of client getting ways. I've never seen a track record as high as Elise Benin. If you do what she tells you, and it's literally 20 minutes of activity a day, just do this, just do this, you will make connections with clients. I have yet to speak to somebody who said, I can't seem to get clients. And I said, did you actually go through? No, I didn't go through. This. I didn't actually do the work yet. I got nothing for you, right? The people who go through that program, and Jake is out there, I think in the Q&A, he can, he can back me up on this. It's amazing. They get to like day seven, day eight, and then it becomes this. A client just contacted me and they want me to do something for them. And Elise is like, I know, because we've been marketing your business. Maybe you should respond, right? It's so mind-blowing because the way she teaches doesn't feel like you're doing anything hard or like you're marketing You're just doing what she says to do. And the next thing you know, you have clients contacting you. So it is the best way. LinkedIn right now, I'm a big believer in having a website as a professional service provider. I'm a big believer in all the other ways that you can build your business. But to get your first clients, LinkedIn is the easiest, most accessible, most inexpensive way, just most like fearless way. You don't have to worry about speaking or writing books or all the things and networking. No, thank you. That's Pam. That's Pam's forte. That's not my forte. LinkedIn yeah. is like a safe space that I can do from behind my computer. That doesn't oh, require I've a lot, lot of over the last two years. <laughs> a that? lot more comfortable. I said that in the last two years, I've become a lot more comfortable just staying put and working on computers. Okay. Um, I love uh, that our members are answering the questions of when things start. Thank you, Eric. It starts on the 12th. So that is amazing. Oh, you guys are so good. Even Lydia, it's every Tuesday starting April 12th at 3.30 p.m. You guys are the best. Is there a way of adding on certifications when going through the self-study programs 
No, because they're live. So if you sign up for the email program, um, the self-study program two weeks from now, they've already been into the certification for two weeks. So it is something that we stage up now. G, G, we did talk about because email was such a popular program last year. He did go or will be going to anyone taking his program who's taking it in the past, offering them a special deal to add on the certification. So that is an option. But if you're looking for certification right now, they only, he's only doing it once. So I can't get him to do the live training the rest of the year. So there's no opportunity to add it on, let's say like July. It is something we're trying to figure out, but we have just found that at that level, having a teacher with you, I think it's one of the many AWI things that just we've learned works for us. We hire faculty members, teachers who care about the outcome they there's no ego in this game it's not just a bunch of theory and making you feel like they really know what they're talking about they're so committed to your success it's there's this uh I don't know they just have a feeling that if their classmates aren't effective they have failed and I love the pressure that they put on themselves I'm looking at you Pam because I know (laughs) Pam puts this level of pressure on herself she teaches a certification for our site audits and every success story she gets, she sends around. And because there's this thrill, right, Pam, of, of yeah. knowing that the person has succeeded. Yeah, totally. Absolutely. Yeah, I love, I mean, that's why I'm here. <laughs> I want to see you guys get clients and make money writing and have a blast doing it. Live the writer's life just like we are, you know. And um, gosh, I'm with 15 years now, with 16 years, with 17 years with AWA. I'm just trying as to a that. member first, guys, she was actually in your shoes as a member. Yeah. And I met Pam. So I knew you at Web Intensive first or boot camp? Boot camp. Met her at boot camp. <laughs> Came to Web Intensive. Actually won our spec assignment. Did, I don't know if you remember that. Did an assignment I for do. me way back then. Yeah. Um, I followed her for, we just kind of stayed in touch because she was, she became one of our success stories. We stayed in touch. And one day she called me and she's like, Rebecca, I'm, I'm, I feel like a fraud. I want to work for a company again. Like, I don't want to be a freelancer. I'm like, Pam, nobody said you had to be a freelancer. Yeah. The writer's life is whatever you want. If it makes you happy, then go right. do that. So she worked for a couple of years and then she was doing work for us as contractor. And she's like, Hey, Rebecca, I talked to you again. I'm like, yeah. She's like, the idiot, by team is way cooler than the team I'm working for right now. Is there any, if you ever have an opportunity, this is back when we talked on phones. If you ever have an opportunity for me to cross over, if you ever feel like you could use my skill set, let me know. I'm like, game on. (laughs) About six months later, (laughs) I figured out all of a sudden there was an opportunity. I I, we basically created a role for her because she's so freaking good at what she does. If you ever have a chance to work with Pam Foster, you should. She's an amazing teacher. I'm so happy to jump ship from where I was and join. So yeah. We're happy to have the dream. Living the dream. (laughs) All right, guys. So thank you so much for joining us today. If you have any questions at all, definitely reach out. We'll be on social media for me. Come into our Facebook group anytime and and ask there. If you have any ideas or follow-up questions for Inside ADBI, either direct message me through Facebook or email me at askrebecca at awai.com. I answer all of my own emails still. Um, I want to know if there's something that we can do to get you unstuck moving forward, a roadblock we can clear, a wall we can hoist you over, an opportunity you can take advantage of. If there's something that's still not clear to you, let me know. We can put these sessions together quickly because if there's any question about anything in any area of this business, we know the answer because we've been doing it for so very long. So please take advantage of us go through the trainings, whatever your next step is in this, move forward. This is your opportunity to create the life that you want. Nobody else's rules, nobody else's definition. And we will be here to support you every step of the way. So with that, bye everyone. We'll see you next time.